Chapter 11, Sleeping Sickness. No, get away! The raven circled and flew at dawn like a black cloud, wings flapping, beaks open, and calling as they stared at her with beady, dark pupils. Dawn pedaled faster as sweat dripped down her brow, mixing with the cold rain. Light, lightning lit up the dark skies and thunder rumbled. Up ahead, she spotted her aunt's cottage. She zoomed up the gravel driveway, then threw her bike down and burst inside the front door. Slam! She shut the door behind her, barely escaping their talons. She was panting, red-faced, and sweating from head to toe. Deary, what's wrong? Aunt Fleur said, rushing over to her. Did something happen on your way home? Aunt Mary added. Uh, I got caught in that thunderstorm, Dawn said breathlessly. It came out of nowhere, and these ravens attacked me. Be careful, they might still be outside. Her aunt gave her a weird look, then peered through the window in the front door. Aunt Mary frowned. What storm? Dearie, I don't see any ravens out there, Aunt Fleur said. Sure you saw them? Dawn followed their gazes, then her mouth dropped open in shock. The skies were blue and crystal clear. There wasn't a cloud in sight. There was certainly no lightning or thunder or rain. Stranger yet, there were no ravens outside either. Her bike lay there, discarded in the gravel driveway. Feeling unsettled, Dawn looked down at her clothes. They weren't wet, even though rain had pelted her the whole way home. Likewise, the ground outside was dry, and so was her bike. Really, I swear, they were right there, Dawn stammered. A whole pack of them. You mean an unkindness? Aunt Fleur said, un scanning the clear skies. A what? Dawn asked. A group of ravens is called an unkindness, Aunt Mary said. In the old days, some folks thought they were harbingers of ill fortune or even death. But those are just silly old fairy tales, Aunt Fleur said quickly. Stop scaring the poor child. She's already had quite a fright. But that gave Dawn a chill. An unkindness. She didn't like the sound of that at all. You have to believe me, Dawn said. I was biking home by the forest, and this storm just came out of nowhere. Then the birds started attacking me. Both ants watched her with worried eyes. Aunt Fleur reached out and felt her forehead. Are you feeling okay, dearie? Aunt Fleur said. We heard about that sickness going around school. The nurse phoned us. Let me fetch you a spot of tea. Aunt Mary said. I was fixing to brew some up anyway. I swear it's true, Dawn said. But now even she felt like she had been imagining things. She scanned the skies one last time. But that didn't change anything. Come, child, lie down, Aunt Fleur said, leading Dawn up the stairs to her bedroom. There, there, just rest now, her aunt said. Tomorrow is a big day. The auction house plans to sell off the spinning wheel. Oh, that's so exciting, Dawn said weak weakly. As she crawled into bed, she felt completely freaked out. She knew what she had seen. She remembered Maleficent and her own promise to return the spinning wheel in exchange for Maleficent's punishing Leah and her friends. But that had just been her imagination, right? None of that was real. It couldn't be. The next day at school, Dawn walked into a noisy, full classroom. She smiled at the sight of all the kids swarming around their desks. Her worries about having somehow caused the sleeping sickness instantly evaporated. Can you believe that sickness? The boy who had teased her on her first day said to his friend. OMG, I was so sleepy, the girl replied miming an exaggerated yawn. Yep, all I did was pass out in bed, the boy said. It must have been from Leah's party. Think it was the flu, the girl said, or something else? Who knows, the boy said. At least we're all better. Everyone was chattering and seemed energetic and fully recovered, except for one. Leah's desk remained empty. Dawn felt a jolt of fear but forced it back. 
The bell rang, and she half expected Leah to rush in, but only Mister Blankenship strode through the door. Psst, where's Leah? Dawn said, sliding into her spot next to Philippa. They both peered at the empty desk. My pops talked to her folks. Philippa whispered. Apparently, she just keeps sleeping and can't wake up. But all the other kids are better, Dawn said. Even though it was smaller than her old school, after two days of just her and Philippa in class, it just it felt packed to the brim. Guess whatever it w- was hit her the hardest. Philippa said with a frown. She probably just needs to sleep it off. Let's hope so, Dawn said. She regretted wishing ill upon Leah. At first, her absence from school had been a fun re- reprieve. Plus, the payback felt nice after her cruel prank. But now reality had set in. Dawn didn't actually want Leah to be sick. She'll be better soon, Dawn reassured herself. All the other kids were better, right? Plus, that day ended up being the best day at school yet. Without Leah around to tease her, the other students warmed up to Dawn. Several kids actually sat with her and Philippa at lunch, including a boy named Fred and his friend Winnie. She had curly brown hair that bounced around as she talked. That's he taken. Sit your behind down already, Philippa said. Both their names sounded strange and old-fashioned to Dawn, but that was true for so many things in Castletown. Often it reminded her of a time capsule, frozen and unchanging, while the rest of the world bar- bar- barreled forward into the future. They dug into their s- school lunches, something called chicken fried steak, which Dawn had never heard of. It was served over mashed potatoes and a weird white gravy. Well, is it chicken or steak? Dawn asked, spearing a piece and inspecting. It closer, everybody laughed at her confusion. Bless your heart, you've never had it before, Winnie said. My mama cooks it up on the regular. Yeah, what did y'all eat up north? Friend asked. Not this, Don said, frowning at the meat on her tray. What animal does it come from? It's cow, Winnie said. Then why is it called chicken? Don asked, still totally confused. She tried a tiny bite. To her surprise, it actually tasted quite yummy. Cause they fry it up like chicken, Fred said, chuckling. They chicken fry it. Make sense? Y'all are weird, Don said, trying out the new word. But this is kind of tasty. They all beamed at her, and then something shocking happened. Stephanie and Kaylee approached their t- table, clutching their trays. They seemed nervous. Uh. Hey there," Stephanie said. "What do you all want?" Philippa said, giving them a look that said, "Don't mess with my friend." "Look, we're sorry about the prank," Kaylee said. "It got out of hand, and for lying and getting you into trouble," Leah added. "Leah made us do it," Stephanie added. "Leah made me do made us do it, but we want you to forgive us." Dawn couldn't believe her ears. "What made you change your mind?" She asked them, being homesick. Kaylee said, "The whole time I was sleeping, I had these terrible nightmares. This fairy kept haunting me." Yeah, me too. Stephanie said, "It's so weird. This voice said we were being punished for lying about you." They both peered at her. Dawn stopped chewing. Suddenly, she couldn't breathe. Here, drink water. Philippa said, handing her a bottle and pounding on her back. Dawn drank thirstily. Once she got a hold of herself, she found her voice. It sounded raspy. Did you find out the fairy's name? She asked. What did she look like? An awkward moment of silence passed. Look, it's just a weird dream, Kaylee said. We probably watched the same scary movie or something, and it caused the dreams. Yeah, it can't be real, Stephanie said. Nobody has the same dreams. Is that all you remember? Don asked. Kaylee cocked her eyebrow. Why are you so interested? Don't know. Just curious.
Don said, trying to sound casual, though her heart was pounding. Hmm, there was one more thing, Stephanie said, searching her memory, but it's kind of strange. The fairy said she wanted something back, that a girl broke her deal and stole it from her. What did she want? Don asked, though she already guessed the answer. Stephanie grimaced and shut her eyes. A spinning wheel. Suddenly, the whole table except for Dawn burst out laughing. A fairy wants a spinning wheel? Fred laughed. That's a new one. Never heard that joke before. Seriously, y'all got crazy imaginations, Philippa said, chuckling along. A spinning wheel of all things? Well, Ma does like to sew, Stephanie said. She's even got a whole room set up for it. You should invite the fairy over, Philippa joked. Maybe we can have a sewing circle with her. Just avoid the dark fairies. They could totally curse you. That prompted more laughter. Dawn tried to join them, but her laugh came out sounding weak. She didn't want them to know the truth. That inside, she was terrified. The sleeping sickness, the nightmares, the dark fairy, the spinning wheel, their shared dreams. None of that could be a coincidence. That meant Maleficent was real. And the sickness wasn't an ordinary sickness. It was a curse.